Welcome back to the channel. I'm Eric Porter, and today we're gonna to talk about traveling with your bike. So I spent the last 20 years as a pro mountain biker riding some of the craziest places in the world, like Iraq, the Himalayas, Iceland, Morocco, and tons more. It's been some of the most rewarding experiences of my life. And today I actually get to bring my family on a trip across the country to go visit Seth at Burn Peak, and we're gonna fly with our bikes. So this is the first for the kids and hopefully this will pass on some information to you to help you travel with your bike as well. So I'm gonna show you how to pack your bikes up and get them on the plane without paying the crazy fees like we used to. And then we're gonna get out there and have some fun riding. Huge thanks to competitivecyclist.com for sponsoring this video. They've got a bunch of travel bags and gear on their website, as well as parts, clothes, and even complete bikes. And the gearheads can help point you in the right direction and answer any questions that I don't answer in this video. So check out the description below for links to some of the stuff from this video, as well as 15% off your first purchase. So give them a shot next time you need some bike stuff. The first thing you need to do before leaving on a big riding trip is get your bike dialed. You really don't wanna fly across the country and show up to find Find out that your bike is messed up and have to deal with it over there. You're traveling to ride and have fun, not work on your bike. So check everything over and make sure your gears are working, your brakes are dialed and pads have plenty of life, and get it all cleaned up and lubed up so there aren't any creaks. Definitely replace any old or worn out parts before the trip too so your bike feels fresh and awesome. All right, Owen, I got your bike all tuned up and ready to go. Is there anything else that it needed done to it? Grips. I mean, look at these, they're like all worn out. So the good thing is that you've been riding a lot. The bad thing is that they get worn out. New grips. Yeah, you've rode these grips for a whole year. So these are the SDG grips that are special size for kids' hands too. They got a kit with the bars and the grips and they're a smaller diameter and they're awesome. Just rip it open with an Allen wrench. That's how you do it. Hammer time. Well, should we pack this thing? Oh yeah. This will be your first time flying with the bike, huh? Yeah. Now for the packing. Owen's on a Diamondback Sinker 24, so it's got smaller wheels, and we can actually fit that in an oversized golf bag. So it's smaller than a regular bike bag, and it's gonna be a lot easier for him to walk around the airport with and actually carry too. This will only work for a kid's bike or a 26 inch dirt jumper, but it's perfect for those. We're gonna take off the bars. I actually used to use this bag with my dirt jump and slope style bikes that were 26 inch, so I could sneak it on the plane without paying the $150 bike fee each way. Then your front wheel will go in right here. Hey. Hey. Hey, that's light. Now we're onto the full size bikes, and those are going in a bike bag. So I used to always travel with a cardboard box because I figured it was simple and easy. You could find them in a bike shop, and if something happened to it, you just get a new one. But the cardboard box obviously has a lot of downsides too. If it's raining, the thing's gonna disintegrate. When security checks it out to see what's inside there, they're gonna cut the tape open and you gotta hope they put it back in the way it's supposed to be. And on top of that, it doesn't have wheels and it's huge. So I finally upgraded to the Thule Round Trip Pro XT, which is this bag right here. It packs up really small when you're not traveling or when you get to your destination. And then the sides go back into it to make it a semi-rigid case, which will help protect your bike. It's pretty light. It's got wheels on it so you can roll it around instead of just dragging this box. It's got a tray at the bottom so you lock your bike in and it keeps it really stable inside the bike bag so it's not just floating around. It has handles all over it too. So the baggage handlers have something to grab and it's easier for us to load into trucks. It's pretty easy to get your bike into one of these bags. You just take your pedals off, your handlebars, take the wheels off, and then the two things that you really wanna make sure that don't get bent are your rotors and your derailleur hanger. So definitely remove those as well. Then you put it on the tray that clicks into the bottom of this bag, put your wheels in bags, and you're pretty much ready to go. There's a bunch of extra space in there too, so as long as you stay under 50 pounds, you can put some shoes in there, your camelback, things like that. And always make sure you take out your CO2s as well because TSA does not like those. Really important thing to remember when traveling with a dropper post in a bike bag is that TSA has no idea what it is or how it works. I showed up one time at Baggage Claim to pick up my bike and my seat was sticking up and the bag was zipped up around it. I thought it was hilarious, but you could definitely run into some problems with that. So with the Magura post, you can just turn it off at the seat post. And with the regular dropper post, you could take the lever off to prevent it from accidentally getting pushed when TSA is making sure you don't have anything dangerous in there. 
We're all packed up and ready to fly, so let's talk about the easiest way to get to the airport. If you can, have a friend or family member drive you there. But if you have to park there, you could use economy parking, but you're gonna end up walking forever through this massive parking lot with all your gear. The easiest way is an off-site parking service that has a shuttle. They're gonna drive right to your car, load your stuff for you, and take you right to the gate. So checking in with the airline is where they used to get all your fees. When you're booking your ticket, make sure you check the rules for what their baggage fees are. I always fly Delta. They used to charge 150 each way, but they changed their policy a couple years ago, and now it counts as a regular bag. So as long as it's under 50 pounds, bikes are no problem, and it's incredible. Are you guys doing the elf? Yeah. <laughs> It's super important to stay hydrated when you travel as well. So I always bring my Camelback chute and I can fill it up with the filters at the airport and I don't have to go through as many disposable water bottles anymore. If you're gonna be traveling a lot, make sure to sign up for the frequent flyer program too. Not only do you get more bags for free, but every now and then you get the first class upgrade like Owen and I did on this flight with our lay flat seats and that's a huge benefit. So when you get to your destination, I always try to rent a pickup truck because then you got tons of room for all your gear. You can put a tailgate pad on it to throw the bikes over it. And if things get muddy, it's not a big deal. Second to that would be renting a minivan because you could fold the back seats down and put lots of gear inside there. When you're booking your trip, make sure to put some thought into where you're gonna stay too. Hotels are usually really picky about bringing bikes inside, especially if it might be muddy and a lot of times an Airbnb is your best bet. On this trip, we're staying at the Burn Peak Ranger Station and Seth has put thought into all of this to make the perfect place to stay for mountain bikers. On top of that, you have a place to cook and unwind when you're not riding the bike. So when you fly somewhere with your bike, you gotta consider what's it gonna be like when I have to rebuild the bike. And in this situation, we're at the Burn Peak Ranger Station and it's super easy. We got the full tool set up here. But if I'm building my bike in a hotel room or in a parking lot, I gotta bring all the tools that I'm gonna need to do that. So whatever tools I use to take apart my bike, I just go ahead and throw those in my bag and fly with them because I'm gonna need them to put the bike back together. So let's get these bikes built up and start riding. I hope this video helps inspire more people to travel with their bikes. It's one of the most rewarding ways to see the world. And hopefully this video gave you some tips as well on how to do it. Thanks to competitivecyclist.com for supporting this video. Check out their website if you need any gear for your bike and talk to their gearheads if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the next adventure.